Hello and welcome back to the very incredible and very beautiful wild. <laughs> So what is storytelling? So effectively what it says on the tin, <laughs> it's telling a story using your photography as a powerful tool to create depth, feeling, emotions, and evoke those emotions in whoever's looking at your pictures. And that's what it is. It's telling something that meant something to you and telling it through photography, which I think is incredible. So in a special ode to this place that I absolutely love, I wanted to tell a story and just show its magic off. And that was my aim for it, so. <laughs> okay, so before you head out on your awesome storytelling adventure, because it definitely will be, there's a few points I just wanted to help you with, some tips before you go out, which I will run through just now. Okay, so your first thing you want to think about before you head out on your storytelling adventure is visualization. So before you get going, really just have a second to think about what it is you want to do and why you want to do it. Because this will really help when you're out and about, you won't get lost in the field as it were. Okay, so the second point you want to think about is your equipment. What equipment are you going to use when you're out? I'm going to stick with my 35 millimeter because I want to have a bit of fluidity throughout my storytelling. So I'm keeping to the same focal length the whole time. It's not, I say that's right or wrong. If you want to change focal length, go for it. But just have a good think about what equipment you want to use. Okay, so the next point you want to think about is variety. So in this scene just here alone, I've got Eric, I've got some ferns, I've got dry stone wall. These are all things that add different elements and variety to your story capture them, capture all these little elements because they build those lovely foundations. Think of it like a cake. You want to have your flour, your eggs, your butter. So Eric is my sugar. <laughs> this is my butter. This is my flour. And making them all together makes this beautiful cake. So think about building a cake when you're out and get that variety because that's what you want to get across in your story. Okay, and the most important point you want to think about is how you are going to evoke emotion in your viewer with your storytelling. You want to do that because if something's important to you and you want to show this story off, you want to make sure that you are hitting that, that heart. <laughs> you want to make them cry. You want to make them go, oh, it's amazing. So think about what emotions you want to evoke. So for me, I want to show the attachment and the love I have for this place. That's what I want to evoke in this. If I don't do that, I'm gutted, <laughs> but that is the idea. So have a think about what it is you want to like stir in someone. And leading on from evoking emotions, you also want to think about how you can use your color scheme, your tones, if you're going to shoot in black and white or color, and think about how you can utilize that as well to also um, enhance those emotions being evoked in your viewer looking at your pictures because the warmth of an image or you know the color the saturation black white whatever can make a very big difference to how someone views it now my best bit of advice i can give you is when you head off on your beautiful storytelling adventure do not and i mean do not look at anyone else's photos and the reason for this is because if you start getting ideas from someone else or looking at someone else's pictures, you will stamp out your own creativity. When actually, if you just go out with your own mind and let your heart and creativity wander, you could create something absolutely incredible. So do not look at anyone else's pictures. Don't get ideas from anyone else. Don't worry about anyone else. <laughs> that is their story. Let them have their story and you focus on your own. You embrace your difference, embrace your uniqueness and embrace your creativity and create something completely different because that is what the world needs. We need more difference. Otherwise we're all just taking the same pictures. So don't look at anyone else's pictures. Don't do it. Be you and just do what you wanna do and see what happens when you go out and just do that. Okay, that's my advice, that's my words. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so the first things I wanted to talk about when you're in your location for your storytelling photography, and that is some fundamentals I'm gonna go through that I think of when I'm out and about, and that is your what, who, where, when, and how. And I'll explain these just now. So to kick off with, what? What is it that you're going to tell your story of? So for me, it's this beautiful, beautiful forest. Okay, so I'm in my forest. So what makes this forest special? What is it that I want to tell the story of? So that could be taking pictures of the ferns as they unfold, looking at the wood sorrel on the ground and the moss and the lichen and the barks on the trees and looking at how big the thing is. Think about scale. How are you gonna capture this and bring your audience into your location? So I want them to have the feel of the big trees, the feel of the little stuff as well, everything that makes up this forest. You wanna capture all those elements into your what. Okay, so that leads me into the second point, which is who. Who are you with on your storytelling? Who do you want to bring along with you? And you wanna think about your key characters because they are your main features of your story. So for me, I'm on this like journey on this trip for the forest, but I'm also with little Eric here. <laughs> so Eric has to be a part of this story as well and I have to add him in and everything from his little perspective. Hey, <laughs> yeah, think about who you're with and bring them into your story. Yeah, are you in my story? Can I have a boop? Boop it if you're in my story. Oh, what about high five? High five it if you're in my story. High five. Come on. Yeah, good boy, Eric. <laughs> okay, so the next point you really want to think about is the where. And yes, I know I've already said what, I'm in a forest. But where is this forest? This forest is in Scotland. Woo! And what makes this forest unique and special to Scotland? And you really just want to take a second to observe what makes your location special and individual and unique. And you want to really harness that and utilize that in your storytelling. So really make the most of what's in your location and use that to its strength. And just walking on this fallen tree and it's making such a nice noise with the bark's like crunching. It sounds so good. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> I'll carry on. So the next fundamental you need to think about let me just jump over this little stream. We did it. <laughs> okay, so the next point to the fundamentals is your when. What do I mean by when? Well, what I mean by when is, when are you going out? So are you going out in spring? Are you going out in summer? Are you going out in winter? Think about all these things <laughs> and bring that into your story. Is it raining? Is it windy? Is your hair gonna blow in the wind softly? Add that to your story because it brings a sense of the elements to your story. You wanna add the element of life to your story. Think about your senses. If it's windy and your hair blows in the wind, you can add that sense and feeling to it. If it's raining and you can get droplets on someone's face, you're adding that again. You know what water feels like. If you can see goose pimples because someone's cold because it's winter, Add those elements into your story and it will build up that foundation and feeling for that story and people understand what it felt like when you were there that day. So think about the when and utilize that, you won't regret it. Look at this bark. Oh, it's like dragon scales. It's amazing. Wowza. Okay, so my final point to the fundamentals is how. How did you get to your location for your storytelling? Did you drive? Did you walk? Did you get on a horse? So however you've got there, you need to bring this into your story as well. Show your journey. So if you're walking, take pictures of your boots or something. If you're in a car, get little snippets of your car or something like that. Um, just bring that into your story. It adds a nice vibe and feeling and people can understand a bit more how you got somewhere. Now we have all of our fundamentals for storytelling photography. I'm now gonna put this all together and I'm gonna create my own story of this place, this beautiful place. And I'm gonna do the best I can with it. I'm gonna show you in just a moment what I've got. Um, I really hope you can feel the sense of love I have for this place and that it means a lot to me. And yeah, it's gonna be hard for me to leave this place. This is why I wanted to do the storytelling about it because it's very special to me. I'll try not to get emotional, <laughs> but I've been coming here for years and it's uh, helped me in so many ways. So for me, this storytelling was just to give something back to this forest as it's helped me so much. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to get emotional. Ah, 
But yeah, it's beautiful, it's amazing, and it's incredible. But you know, it's never goodbye, it's always farewell. And a friend told me that, and it's true. You can always come back somewhere. So this is just farewell for now to this beautiful place. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, here you go. I've been to many places, but none have touched my heart quite like this place. And that is the story I wanted to tell. The story of how a girl fell in love with the forest, with the trees, with the birds, with the flowers and the sunset, and how she found magic there. But now she has to leave it. So I wanted to make this story in ode to a forest that I love and keep its magic alive. I ran into you Do you need a picture?